morning, good morning everybody. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I hope you guys are all doing well today. For those of you that are new to our channel, we have a lot of new people. Uh, my family and I live 100% off-grid with solar power in northern Idaho, and we enjoy educating on our lifestyle, um, on our traditional skills and bushcraft skills, wilderness skills, and sharing our faith. So I hope you enjoy what we're going to talk about today. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, Shelly and Tammy. So glad to have you guys joining me. We've got a really good conversation ahead of us today. Um, I thought we would cover just a little bit on back to school. I have a question for all of you out there. <coughs> Excuse me. How many of you are have children that are going back to school or are already back in school at this point? And then how many of you are um, no longer affected by that? I am no longer necessarily affected by homeschooling. Um, but we continue to talk about um, continuing our education always. Uh, my thoughts in my mind are that the time that I stop learning will be when I have petunias growing above me and I'm six feet below. Because I really feel it is extremely important for us to continue learning um, regardless what it is. It could be things that inspire us. It could be things that um, nurture creativity. It could be just straight out knowledge. It could be life skills. It could be homesteading skills, preparedness skills. Um, but as long as we're learning, we are nurturing our brains. And I think that that is one of the most important things we can do for ourselves next to aligning ourselves up with God and keeping our bodies healthy. Okay, I knew Tammy was still homeschooling. And um, I know that in certain areas, schools have already started. And I believe you, Tammy, if I'm not mistaken, are like we were where we kind of schooled all year long. Um, it's one of those things where we continued to be able to keep things going, keep the brain fresh, keep the material still present, um, and then kind of just um, immerse into the next year. Diana says, empty nester and it's great. Always keep learning in the introductory herbalism course right now. Awesome, 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 awesome. That is a fabulous course. And right up my alley. And Tammy says they start school next month. So when we're homeschooling, it's a whole different ball game compared to when we um, have children out in the mainstream schools. I am no longer affected by going back to school. I am always learning something new. My grandmother always said the day, oh, I wanna see that. I can imagine it's something the day you stop learning. Oh, and I just realized I didn't invite two people. So let me invite them. There is, when the text is long, it says see more. And it's blue and it's highlighted, but it's this teeny tiny. And I cannot ever get it to open up for me. So it fights with me the entire time. But I want to um, invite these folks and um, share with me some of the things um, that discourage you from learning um, or that keep you um, on course for the things that you most desire to learn. Share that with me a while. While I do this. Okay. All right, that's done. Now, let me get back out of here. And actually, aha, Grandma says, always said the day you die is the day you stop learning. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Try using a pencil eraser to click on the Seymour. Hmm, good thought. Now I gotta find a pencil eraser. Aha, I know, where I have one. Let's see if that works, just out of curiosity. Kind of like a stylus. <laughs> nope, it doesn't like me. It just doesn't like me. But thank you for the idea. I'll try another one or maybe I'll get my stylus out next time so that I can do that. But today's app on Facebook is showing me huh, 
the uh, comments. So that's good. So one way or another, we'll get this done. Okay. Um, good morning, Terry. I want to touch on our prayer list real quick today um, before we go any further. And then I'm going to delve in here. But I'd like to know if you, if you guys would be willing to share with me the things that discourage you, the things that throw you off your path, the things that keep you from attaining your goals, the things that make you quit. If you will share those with me. Um, we have a really large prayer list. It is constantly growing and I am so thankful for that because we all need prayer and we all need to be willing to ask for prayer because God won't answer prayers if we don't ask and if we don't present them to him. Yes, he knows all, but he's wanting a relationship with us and he's wanting us to um, commune with him. So we are told throughout the Bible that we must ask and he will answer. Now, not all the answers are always the way we expect them to be, but he does answer our prayers. And I want to point out, um, first and foremost, for all of you that have been helping me pray for Kim Johnson and Martin and their family, um, Martin passed last week. Um, he put on quite the fight and, and was certainly... Um, a miracle in many ways in the medical system and um, I think that Kim and the children got their miracle in that they were able to spend those last days with him and it wasn't sudden that he was gone and I truly do believe that Martin was hearing what they had to say and um, it certainly is not an easy time for them but Kim is still walking in her faith and is just glorifying God and Martin she, you know she said um, her way of sharing that Martin passed was that heaven got a, a new recipient and a very loud voice because Martin was very proud to be a Christian and spoke that out loud in both his actions and his words and it's just been tremendous following her I've grown from following her and even now I check her page every day just to see you know how I can be praying different for them and it's just amazing the faith walk and 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 all the love that they're receiving so I'd love for you guys to continue sharing the love with them and lift them in prayer um, each of them are having their own struggles in it um, as far as losing a spouse and a father and um, just a neat experience though to walk that out with them. Um, amazing, amazing faith. So please pray for them. And um, we have a couple other uh, prayer requests here. We have a, um, prayers for Faith and Taylor and Mimi. Again, the Johnson family. I'd also like to ask you to pray for the Martz family. Um, friends of ours lost their 32 year old daughter. Um, she was uh, autistic as well. So that touches my heart greatly. They lost her on Sunday. And uh, if you could just pray for them, because it was very unexpected. And uh, we have prayers for Cheryl, who is dealing with cancer. And Chelsea and Eric. And uh, David and Sherry Santif. As well as Steve and Candy Hill. And Jamie and her family from an American homestead. And the list goes on. Um, those are the most critical right now as well as Chad. And um, I'd like you to continue um, strongly lifting Pat Kenny. We've been praying for Pat for quite some time with his cancer. And he is, has started a new treatment that is uh, less harsh on his heart. And he is um, really looking good. Uh, I haven't seen him look this good in a long time. And he may be joining us later. He said... He had to finish his chores first. So that's good because that means he's up and at him. Um, where before he was very, very limited. He was dealing with congestive heart failure and uh, congestive heart disease as a result of the chemo. And then we also have his son-in-law, Mark, who we've been talking about with his cancer. Same cancer. Um, both are incurable, um, but they are working very hard to heal themselves and um, get into a remission state and... Uh, just would like for you to keep praying for them. Mark is has started his chemo treatments. Um, 
He has not gotten sick, but he is extremely tired, which is good. That's his body healing. And also for Terry and June and Mona and Ken and each other. And I want to share this with you too. Um, this came to me this morning doing my devotions and it is very fitting. There are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. That's Proverbs 18.24. And I really feel that that is what we are forming here in our community. We have such a strong, bold community of believers and non-believers. But we, I'm just so thankful that the way everybody sticks together and everybody prays for each other and lifts each other. It is just so nurturing. It's so, so nurturing for me as well. And I, I just feel very blessed to be in this seat and watch it all transpiring in front of me and seeing prayers answered and being able to celebrate these things. Um, so thank you guys for being present and, and communicating with me and sharing this stuff with me. Okay, so let's see here what else we've got. I'm gonna try to get these comments to come up on the iPad. And of course, Facebook only wants to show me the most relevant. I need to see all of them. I hate when it does that. Facebook thinks it's all knowing. <laughs> okay, Terry says, good morning, my friend. Sorry I'm late. No need to be sorry, glad to have you. And let's see here, whoop, there, I done it now. Had it and now I had to switch out of here. Okay. I'm trying to get my Evernote out of here. There we go. And that's gonna fight with me too, okay. Um, There we go, okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, Diana says, the very long wait can be discouraging. In some things, it's been decades and some years. Martin was larger than life. He was not ashamed of his savior. Oh, that was so awesome. Just, just learning them in the little time that I've had, uh, they just seem like such amazing people. And I have you to thank for connecting me with them, so thank you. And exactly on being discouraged. Um, we are going to delve into that greatly then. Um, Shelly says, I am no longer affected by... Oh, we read that one. Um, let me see here. It is frustrating, Shelly says, with these allergies and people do not understand and just say that you can build up by desensitizing, by eating a little now and again. This is not just an allergy, but causes painful eczema, welts at times, just from touching the foods. Yeah, I told... Girl... Totally, totally hear you. Um, unless people have walked out what we are personally walking, they will not truly understand the deep-seated effects it has on us, nor do they understand that everybody's different. Our makeups are different. Our bodies are different. Our minds are different. Our paths are different. And as a result of that, you know, everybody thinks they have the answer. And, you know, I'm really cautious sometimes myself when I'm sharing ideas with people. You know, I guess we all want to be helpful and we want to share what we know. And maybe, um, in part, we need to first receive people's um, thoughts always as coming in a good-natured way, um, regardless, because that makes it so much easier and it eliminates the negativity. But then also knowing our situation and, and just understanding maybe for lack of better terms, their ignorance to our situation. It is hard. I can totally relate with Shelly on that one um, and, and with Diana. Um, but when it comes to food, I am so limited still even as to what I can and can't eat. I am the perfect test, for lack of better terms, again, dummy for uh, foods. Uh, because if there is a GMO or a toxin in a food and I have it, you will know. So, you know, we've got to learn to work with what works best for us, but also keep researching. I have found so much, and Shelly, I know you're doing the same thing. God gifts us with information often. If you see something cross your Facebook feed or your email or a website pop up continuously or, you know, oftentimes there's reason behind it. God uses those little things to educate us, and I've found so many useful um, tips and tricks and things that I can do. And the thing is constantly being on that path, seeking healing. Um, 
but I know how discouraging and how hard that can be. And Terry says, I get discouraged about wondering if God is hearing my prayers and being away from my wife. It's hard not being with someone you've loved for many years. When I do get discouraged and start to cry, I just close my eyes and pray and ask God to let me hear from my wife and he lets me. It might be the same day, but sometimes it isn't. Okay, and when I finish talking to my wife, I close my eyes and thank God so much for hearing me. And you know what, Terry, thanks for your transparency. You know, um, it's not always easy to share how sensitive some subjects can be for us. And that's awesome. And I, I really appreciate your transparency and I hope that others will feed off of that as well. In that, you know, it's, it is a hard walk. Whether you're a believer or a non-believer, it's a hard walk. But as a believer, a lot of times, you know, especially new believers, you come into it and, and you expect God to just, you know, through prayer to instantly open doors and to change things. And, and it's like Diana said, sometimes it can be a decade, sometimes it can be years. You know, we've been walking out our situation for three years since my surgery, but I had unexplained health issues for six before that. And, and my life was just slowly deteriorating. So we are fortunate that um, our lifespan is not as long as those in the Bible because many in the Bible went for 40 plus years. You see 40 referenced a lot in the Bible. Um, and I, I can't imagine surfing things for 40 years. And we are fortunate. But the thing is, with our faith, as we walk through these things, and as we keep praying, and as we see God answering, you know, um, sometimes we get so caught up in our struggles, and I, I am uh, speaking for myself, that we get so caught up in our struggles that we can't see the forest through the trees. So when we're that way, sometimes we're not seeing or hearing what God is doing. Again, you've got to remember that God is doing a million things that we can't see. And that's what makes it so incredibly amazing is that in the background of things, God is doing so much, a lot that we'll never know. You know, he's softening the heart of others. He's, he's putting things in place. He's opening doors. He's working on our own hearts. He's, he's teaching. He's, he's guiding He's adding humor a lot of times. He's there. He's always there. And that is one thing that we have to learn to trust in. More than anything, and I'm going to give this analogy now. How many of you have an old t-shirt, an old sweatshirt, old pair of jeans, and they are the absolute most comfortable thing you own? Good morning, Angela. I, I was sitting out on the, the porch this morning doing my devotions and this sweatshirt, this is funny, this is from high school days. And you know, I'm always laughing at my husband who's wearing holy t-shirts and stuff and, and you know, his reply is that they're comfortable. He's got a ton that don't have holes, but I get it. You know, this isn't necessarily holy, but it's ratty up here at the, at the collar and sleeves are cut off, the bottom's cut off. And... This is one of my favorite sweatshirts. And I love being cozy in it. I love being cozy in my worn jeans. They're just comfortable. One of our biggest downfalls is that we get comfy in our situations in the bad way. In that we get comfortable in our norm of discouragement and sadness and, and, and we don't always know how to get out of that. What I want to encourage you to do is get in your comfy clothes and reverse that because we fall into what is, is normal for us. I learned this with my brain, with retraining my brain, that the brain falls into what feels normal, even though normal isn't always good and healthy. And that was my case. And we do the same thing with patterns. Patterns that we put ourselves into as far as, you know, how we react to things and how we feel. 
And if we can learn that, and, and to put this analogy together, that our comfy clothes are just as similar to the comfy arms of Christ. God is the answer. God is our peace, our comfort, and the answer in our storms. And although it is hard because we are dealing with and communicating with and trusting something that we can't see, but we trust the wind and we know it's there. We need to get into that place where when we feel discouragement and negative feelings setting in, that we instantly revert our thoughts into something comfy and cozy and focus our thoughts on the good and what God is going to do. Now, it's really crazy, but all of these lessons came this week, but at an opportune time. But also, it was really encouraging to see how we had learned and how we personally have progressed. Last week, we had uh, a second showing of sorts. Um, the folks from Arizona came up. Her brother had looked at our place first, and she trusted his opinion greatly, and he really felt our place was suitable for them. They came, and um, they seemed very excited. They were a little hard to read, um, but we were thanking God for already selling our house, and I continue to do that. I continue to thank him for already having sold our home. Even if these people are not the right ones, I know that he has the right people lining up. He's already working his million little things in the background. But we didn't get an offer. We were really, really encouraged and excited for an offer. We all get that way. We have expectations. And as I've told you, I try not to have expectations. Instead, what I was doing was trusting God. And when that offer didn't come in, and my elk didn't show up in the yard, how uh, some of you that might be new may not have heard that, but I've asked God to show me elk in my yard, elk and moose. Separate times together, I didn't care, but in my yard before I moved, because they have been evading our property all these years and just making tracks on the perimeter and pooping on the perimeter, but not showing themselves. I didn't get my elk. We didn't get an offer. And you know, our circumstances are very grim and are very uncomfortable. But we kind of chuckled about it, you know, because we were both, you could see the, the, the wind coming out of our sails. And right at that point, that's where discouragement could easily set in. But we kept trusting. We kept trusting. And that day where we were, you know, in that place, God showed Glenn an eagle from his man cave window while he was doing his devotionals. Eagles are his thing. I see eagles too, but my dominant thing are my hearts. The other funny thing is I did see a heart as well. That big slab stone that's out in front of my entry of, to my home, I'll have to show it to you later. That's been there for, gosh, six years maybe? There is a tiny heart just off center in that stone. I never noticed it before. And that could be that God chose not to show it to me yet, but I saw it this week. God is there. God is present. And we've got to keep trusting. So I am sharing this with you in a time when we could be very discouraged, on our knees, and really a train wreck. But we've chosen and been taught that he is the answer. And, and it's not an easy course. It's not an easy lesson. This has been a nine year, beat it through your brow kind of lesson for us in a lot of ways. Um, this lifestyle is amazing. We have walked out all kinds of different things. This being the hardest. Um, we are in, for those of you that are new, we are in a deep financial situation. That is why we are selling our home. It's a result of my illness and my medical bills and just not being able to get back on our feet. So us selling our home is, 
extremely necessary and it needs to happen like yesterday for us. And for those of you that are watching from Idaho or in a state that gets a lot of unusual weather and cold weather in the winter, you know that the seasons change very quickly and we are heading into a situation where we are not prepared for winter here because we are planning not to be here for winter, but it's getting really nitty gritty. So I want to encourage you that whatever it is you're walking out, hang on and trust and keep praying. Keep praying and keep thanking him. Those are the two biggest things in a believer's life that will keep you on top of the mountain versus in the valley under the rubble. And I want you to remember that is to keep praying and asking, interceding and, and um, discerning and asking for his hand, asking for his knowledge, asking for his guidance, asking for, clear, for clarity and thanking him for every little thing he does and even more so for what he's gonna do because it's gonna be big. It's gonna be big for us all. So let me just see here. I know I see Diana shared something also. Diana says, it's a comfort to know that he is always working on our behalf. Amen. It truly is. It is such a comfort. And you know, it's easy to fall prey to negativity and negative thoughts and to be overwhelmed, to be caught off guard by things. You know, I've, you know I'm talking about our circumstances, but then I see Kim lose Martin and the Martzes lose joy. And you know, that puts my, my circumstances at a very different place. And it gives me a lot to be thankful for. We've got to focus on perspective too sometimes and the perspective of things because the weight of our circumstances can jade our perspective. So we've got to think of these things. And when these thoughts start entering our mind, You've always got to remember that if there is a negative voice, a negative tone, uh, and that you're going into a negative place, those are not of God in any way, shape, or form. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. God brings life. So remember that. And remember that we have power greater than he does. And we have power over our thoughts, our feelings, our reactions, all of that. And Terry, it's been awesome walking this journey with you and to see your faith grow, all of you. And I love that in addition to us being transparent, you guys are being transparent. And that is huge. In addition to that, we're going to, well, in weeks to come, we're going to have some other discussions in regard to that. But I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being transparent and sharing because, you know, people listen to me and I know I have a different perspective on things. I know my view is different than other people, but my view didn't always, my view wasn't always this way. My thoughts weren't always this way. This is growth. So to see us all at different levels, to see us all being transparent can really play a role in people that are believing there's a God but not understanding how to, to communicate with them and to get to where I am or to get, you know, to get to a different place. And I want it to be an exciting experience for you to get where I am and not that you feel like somehow you are failing, um, somehow you are not walking it out right. That's not it. The more you walk it out, the more you grow in Christ, the more you grow in your faith, the more you grow in your abilities to cope. It's no different than survival skills. The more you practice, the better you are able to cope in survival situations. This is no different. That's why our faith-led preparedness is very broad because in essence, it all pulls together. It all goes together. And it's just awesome. It's just awesome. Diana says clarity has been a word he has brought to me over and over the last year or so. 
It's amazing how he teaches us. It's amazing what he teaches us. And I'm finding that in my journaling, and even looking back in the years that I haven't journaled, these last three years have been so amazing for me in my walk with Christ and in with, with Jesus. You know, I've always had a relationship with him, always. Even when I wasn't close to him, I still knew he was there. But this has been amazing. And that's why I talk about it. And that's why I'm sharing my story with you all. Because to be where I was before and to come to where I am now, it's just amazing progress. It's transformation. And we all are doing that. We are all transforming. And like Diana said, he is transforming us each individually all at the same time. That's the amazing thing with God is that he is ever present and he's omnipresent and he's helping us all with all of our struggles, with all the different things we're going through, whether it's financial, whether it's marital, whether it's um, with our children, whether it's with our homestead or our home, with health, whatever it is, he is helping us all at the same time. He's giving us each our little, our little, I was going to say pill, but that's not even what I'm looking for. And word, you know, and a lot of times it is word. Um, he's, he's giving Diana clarity. He's giving us patience. He's giving um, Terry patience and strength. You know, it's just amazing what he shares, as he shares it, how he shares it. But the thing is, we can look back. On our, on our walk and see God's hand so much. And it's just amazing. Now, it, it awes me um, how God has been sharing these things with me and then also seeing some of the things that are happening around me with all of you. And today's lesson really was um, something that, it's just very timely. It's very, very timely. Um, you know, for us, when it comes to discouragement, and I, I think a lot of times when we hit rock bottom and when we hit the scary stuff, um, again, we're in that comfortable place that we feel comfortable in. We have a roof over our head. We, we might have good jobs. We, you know, everything just seems right, but we're, we're going through a rough time. And Underneath that all are underlying things that maybe we can't see, maybe we can see, that things aren't exactly as good as they should be. You know, with us, we're in this financial turmoil. We have extreme weights over our heads. But we're afraid to start over. We're afraid to allow God to move us into a different place. Maybe a change of a job. Maybe a change of a new home. Maybe the uncertainty of not knowing where you're going to go. If you're going to be in a tent in a camper, in a home, building a home, you know, that's been our saga. So I read this and it just made me celebrate. I love reading inspirational stuff and this was certainly inspirational to me. This is um, the word for you today, the devotional that we get from our church that you can also get on the app and on their website. And uh, Proverbs 24, 16 says, Though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. So that's such an awesome promise to us, guys, that we, we are going to fail. We are going to fall. We are going to sin. But we are going to rise again. He just reminded me that I need to ask you guys for prayers for him, too. As you can see, he's not walking as steadily as he normally would. Um... Monday, uh, we all got very sick of sorts. Austin and I, I was not well. My head felt like it was going to pop. Austin was extremely dizzy and had vertigo really bad and enough that he was, was vomiting. And he went and worked, and he's working close. And I knew that he would be coming back because he was working on handrails next for this project. So he would be building the handrails like he did here. And he came back, I was in the bathroom, but something just didn't feel right to me. And he opened the door and as he opened the door, I just had this really weird, weird feeling. I was just coming out of the bathroom and he made this sound and I went down and caught him with his one leg just kind of moving funny and it, tears running down his face. He was lightly hammering and completely went down to his knees, threw his back out and 
has been not able to move very well since. It was one of the dumbest things that ever happened. I don't know what happened. I just bent over, swung once with the hammer and went to swing again. It's like somebody stuck a knife right in my lower back and I just dropped. It took me probably five, ten minutes to get up off the ground. Luckily there was a post right there that I could grab a hold of and pull myself up and I don't know what happened. Stupid stuff. Who knows? Your color doesn't look real good right now. You've been standing too long. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go lay flat. <laughs> uh, anyway, oh, Terry says prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Um, you know, and I look at it too as a little bit of spiritual warfare going on here. We talked a little bit about that last week, but you know, we are very boldly coming to the throne and speaking uh, the truths of our faith, being transparent in our situation, and sharing Christ. And you know, that makes the enemy really angry and definitely wants to try to trip us up. So we were all flat on our back Monday, part of Tuesday, and today we're. <laughs> I'm trying to keep him down, but you can't keep a good man down. You can't. So anyway, if you would keep him in your prayers, I'd appreciate it. So, back to starting again. I'm going to read this, this uh, Bible verse again. It's Proverbs 24, 16. Though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. On the night of December 9th, 1914, Edison Industries was destroyed by fire. The loss exceeded $2 million, along with the majority of Thomas Edison's work. He was insured only for 238 because the buildings were constructed of concrete, which was thought to make a building fireproof. At 67 years of age, the great inventor watched his life's work go up in flames. The next morning after firefighters had finally brought the inferno under control, he surveyed his charred dreams and crushed hopes. As he looked at the scene, he said... There is great value in disaster. All our mistakes are burned up. Thank God we can start anew. That is powerful. That is powerful. There is great value in disaster. All our mistakes are burned up. Thank God we can start anew. New beginnings, guys. Whether it's new beginnings throughout the day because you're battling discouragement and fear and struggles, or whether it's an every day. Sometimes we just have to do that to build our faith to what it needs to be. And the nice thing is God is always there with us. Three weeks after the fire, Edison produced one of his greatest inventions, the first phonograph. Try to imagine the world of music and entertainment without it. The Bible says, for though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. With God on your side, you can begin again because the power to do it resides within you. It's the same power that raised Christ from the dead. Paul prayed for believers of Ephesus that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Where is your strength? In your inner being. He continues, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. So the word for you today is, you can start again. Good morning, Teresa. Those are powerful, powerful words. And I read those, I don't remember if it says what day that was. That was August 9th. So that was Friday of last week, I think. Something like that. It was last week. You know, so being able to hold on to that and hold on to the fact that God is working should help us greatly. It, it's going to be hard sometimes when we're discouraged and, and fearful and struggling and, and pulling ourselves back up. But those are powerful things to remember. And you know what? Through the failure or that fire, it wasn't necessarily a failure for Thomas Edison, but it was devastation. He pulled forward and, and still continued in what he was doing and succeeded. And that's the thing. I keep telling you guys, we got to fail forward. We got to focus forward. And and that's the important part. Now, 
this was yesterday's and I just thought it was so perfect. Um, dealing with discouragement. When we, I'm sorry, how can we conquer discouragement? Let me suggest nine specific tips. One, look within. Examine yourself for the underlying cause. Why are you discouraged? What is causing your discouragement? Two, admit that you are discouraged. This is something that's easy to avoid, ignore, or lie about, and, but denial doesn't help you grow. So we need to remove the pride and realize that maybe we're discouraged because something that we failed in, or maybe we're discouraged because of something we said that may not have been the nicest. We've got to own those things. I always tell Austin, you've got to own your mistakes. The biggest and manliest thing that he can do is to own his mistakes and be um, without pride and own it, explain it, apologize for it, and move on, move forward. Three is identify precisely what you are discouraged about. Name it and then face it. You know, when we speak those things, write those things in our journal, you know, it makes them more real. It makes it, it makes the mountain present. So now we've got to climb over it. And remember, there's a million ways to get over that mountain. You may need to go around it and keep going until you get to the top. There might be a straight shot up the mountain, but we got to work at it. Four, recall the nature of the discouragement. Disappointments will come and go, but discouragement is a response. And we can respond in other ways. So like I said, looking out the window the other morning, getting my coffee, I'm not seeing my elk, uh, you know, we didn't get an offer, and the enemy was sitting on my shoulder and, and trying to put negativity in my head. It's like, no, no, God's already sold it. God's already sold my house, and, and I, I'm thanking him for it. You know, we need to put ourselves in that different place. Five is begin meditating frequently on scripture. God's truth can help you accurately evaluate what you feel. It's very true. Um, we listen to Joe McGee uh, from time to time. And, you know, that is how he battles the enemy is by repeating Bible verses. Because those are the truth. Those are concrete truths. And the word of the Bible, they are life, they are light. And light always covers darkness. So by meditating on that, we can make a huge difference and, and push the enemy aside and be stronger um, than the place he's trying to take us to, into that weakness. Six, take your area of discouragement to God in prayer. Ask him to reveal what he wants to teach you in this area of your life. And that's like Diana. You know, God's been sharing with her clarity. And, you know, Terry has been seeking God and seeking God and finding him and meeting him and seeing the answers to prayer. So, you know, taking that to prayer and speaking to God and communing with God is what we are called to do. The more we do that, the more peace, joy, and comfort we find. Seven, focus on the Lord, not your situation. Amen. Amen. Ask him to help you to see this disappointment and its lessons from his perspective. You know, the more we focus on him, the more answers we often get. The more he guides us, the more he directs us, the more he shows us. So very true. And when we refocus from our situation, um, our, uh, when our focus changes, you know, we're no longer um, breeding that negativity, breeding that discouragement and focusing on it, we're bringing light and we're bringing um, creativity to the table, which is going to loosen that, that stronghold. So eight, view the cause as coming from the Lord. If he understood that he allows disappointment, if we understood that he allows disappointments, we can find meaning in trouble. You know, I have said before, when, when new things come our way, new, new disasters, new struggles, I don't... I don't necessarily get excited, but I'm thankful that there's a new lesson and that there's something new to learn and that there's a new hurdle because each lesson, if we allow it, is a teaching moment and will be something recorded in our knowledge banks for future reference.
Nine, we need to confess three things. The Father is with me in the pain. He's in control of my life and has allowed this for a reason. He is a good God who will not let this disappointment be in vain. Try speaking these truths out loud. You know, the enemy brings the negativity into our lives. Um, God may allow it for growth. Um, God may allow it because we're not reaching out to him and asking otherwise. So, you know, we need to really look at that and ask him to help us to see this disappointment as... Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Discouragement may sound harmless enough, but don't underestimate its power. By keeping watch, you can avoid its deadly trap. So write down these nine steps on an index card and then review the list whenever disappointment starts to consume your thinking. I'll share those later um, in the comments so you can save them if you like. Now this was today's. External causes of discouragement. Whether in the workplace or elsewhere, discouragement can hit from many angles, depleting energy and productivity. To lessen, to lessen its paraly sorry, paralyzing effect, wise believers learn to detect its sources and its symptoms. So let's examine some external causes. By the way, what are the things that cause you guys discouragement? What are things, if, if you're willing to right now, that if you haven't already shared, what are some things that are causing you discouragement right now? How do you cope with discouragement? What are some things you do? So while I read this, you know, feel free to share those things. All right, so unresolved disappointments. This could be letdowns caused by our own failed expectations or someone else's. Expectations are really a negative in my opinion. They set us up for failure. If we have too high of expectations and things don't go our way, Right there it is, you have disappointments. Where when you head into things and don't have expectations, it's always a sweet experience in my opinion. I've learned to disengage from an expectation. Um, I had high hopes um, last week, but, and I had great trust in God, and I still do. And some people will be like, well, you had such high hopes and you had trust in him and you had faith in him, but he didn't follow through. No, yeah, not yet. His timing is better than mine. My time, I don't know what he has planned. I don't know what's ahead. He knows. He's ever knowing. So his timing is going to be perfect and I'm trusting in that. So constant criticism. Frequent put downs can make us think what's wrong with me. Yet unless God reveals truth in such a comment, learn to let them go. The feeling that no one's listening, this can leave us with a sense of rejection. The thing is though, we have God to speak to and he is ever hearing, even though we feel that he may not be there or present. If we trust in that and we know that he's always listening, there is somebody listening. A sense we aren't appreciated after doing our best. We at times get so tied to our work that someone's failure to acknowledge our efforts can feel like a personal rebuff. And that's true. You know, we are, in some ways, that's a little prideful because we're expecting people to praise or to notice. Um, and we do get connected with it. So we have to learn to detach ourselves in some ways. Bad working conditions, this can be hard. Many believers enjoy what they do, but pick up on coworkers' cruelty, bitterness, or refusal to recognize their investment of time, energy, or creativity. This can make it extremely difficult to get motivated about going to work each day. And, and that is very true. It can be really hard to be in environments that are constantly negative. I can't can't anymore. I feel so blessed to be self-employed because if I had to be in an environment like that, it's very draining. It's very discouraging. And, and it is that. So we've got options there. You know, um, we can learn to, you know, feel sorry for them in their circumstances because obviously they're in need of God's love. Or, you know, we can always move on and find something that gives us greater pleasure. But it's something that we can ponder and possibly find a solution for. Lacking opportunities to shine. A job that doesn't make the best use of one's gifts and abilities can wear a person down. 
So can tight-fisted management that limits freedom to make innovations. So again, when that's the situation and you're being, your growth is being stunted, we need to examine that and look for ways to expand on that and change that. Oftentimes, it's the people we see every day who seem to have the most power for causing discouragement in our lives. Read through this list again. Do any of the above scenarios sound familiar? If so, pray for the strength to face these external discouragers with renewed confidence. You know, when we can renew our own confidence through Christ, we have the power to look past a lot. Um, I've shared with you before, growing up, um, I was... I had I had no self-esteem as an adult because of my childhood. I'm so thankful that God blessed me with the courage to move past that and and he helped me to build my self-esteem and and my courage to do the things I do. And because I have been in that place, that's why I also want to help others to get out of that place. So, if any of these things connect with you guys. I'm going to share that one too later. You know, discouragement can be really hard. You know, um, there's so many avenues that discouragement can, can creep into our, our daily lives. You know, um, with our health, um, searching for jobs, uh, our marital situations, our financial situations. Um, waking up and not feeling well and having a lot to do. There's just so many e easy ways for the enemy to just seep right in there. Um, I saw there were more comments, so I'm going to try to see them on here because some of them were longer. It's funny. It won't let me see if this will do it. Ha, ah, there we go. Okay. All right, let's see here. Tammy says, not being able to get everything done as fast as I want to. Financial issues, people not doing what they're supposed to. Yeah, it's hard. It's definitely very hard because there's so many outside influences um, to our circumstances and our lives on a regular, very regular basis. Um, Let me see here. I know there were others that were shared here. Let me just see. Shelly says, my health preventing me from having a life. I understand that too, sister, and that will change. Um, that will certainly change. Okay, Terry shared something else, so let me... Okay, there we go. Let me go back here. I want to see what all you have to say, so let me, this is a good conversation. All right, um, ha, there we go. Terry says, I feel discouraged sometimes when I ask God to let me hear him, but I don't, or at least I don't think I do. I ask him for forgiveness for sounding like I'm rushing him to bring us together, but I also thank him for the pain and tears and for my marriage and wife. I tell him I'm not giving up on him or my wife and, my, and our marriage. Awesome. And you know, it's hard. I spent a long time, Terry, wanting to hear God's voice, wanting to see God speaking to me. I, I remember being on the farm in Pennsylvania and just seeking that so strongly. So when you shared a lot of this with me, it takes me back there. I, I wanted that so bad. I wanted to know what God wanted of my life. I wanted to know what God wanted me to do. I wanted to know, you know, that I was pleasing him and I just wanted that relationship so bad. I heard people saying how they, he would talk to them or speak to them or show them things and I was so hungry for that. So I totally, totally get your hunger for that and it will come. The thing is, what I find is when I'm doing my devotions and I'm seeking certain things, certain thoughts come to my head and I know that's him implanting those thoughts. There have been times where what I was seeking was direction and all of a sudden this flood of thoughts just came to me and, and they were wholesome thoughts. So I knew they were from him and 
I just, I had to start writing everything down. It was coming at me so fast. So I think that was one of the starts of things. I know he always, <coughs> excuse me, shows me the signs in the woods when I'm out. I see hearts everywhere. I just, I feel his presence. When I was at the lake last week, I think that was last week, it was just crazy to feel him kind of like enveloping me or just wrapping his arms around me. And I felt that so often when I was healing. You know, and sometimes as we walk through these things, Terry, it takes us getting to our knees for him to bring us back and, and envelope us. I know I was, I was on mine when I really, really started feeling and seeing his presence. You know, I, I've always known he's in my home. I could feel that. But the conversation you're seeking, uh, it, it'll come. Just stay in communion with him. And, and, and don't be discouraged. I mean, it's a natural thing to be discouraged. But when you get discouraged, remember his promises. and Meditate on his word. Remember, pull a couple of those Bible verses out that share with us how we are supposed to seek him. Um, I can share some of those later off the top of my head. They're not flourishing. But, you know, and, and having faith in him and in your marriage and in your wife and it all coming back together is huge. Your faithfulness will be blessed greatly and in ways you'll you'll never imagine. And, and the fact that you guys are communicating, like I said to you before, I see a lot of growth being on the outside looking in. So keep doing what you're doing and thank you for being transparent. Now, I have something else I wanna share. This book, oh my gosh. There's two stories to this book. First is, I'm amazed by it, it's awesome. It's a Joyce Meyer book. The other story behind this book is this is The Mountain Man's. And I'm going through this book and I am being so incredibly touched at the love that the person had that gave this to him. Because the person took the time to go through this book, one devotional at a time, and wrote him specific notes to encourage him in his walk. And I'm, I'm being very careful with this book because um, you know there's, there's notes like this in each section and I don't want them to fall out. I don't want them to be displaced and just what a gift of love. It just I, warms my heart. It's very cool. It's very cool and, and such a touching, touching gift. And, you know, it's a special thing to know that we are loved by people. And that's why I said what I said in the beginning with the Bible verse that I read. It is Proverbs 18.24. There are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks close and closer than a brother or a sister and you know I really feel that's what we're building here and it's really important and today's um, item that I read imagine that is on discouragement it's called no hope and the book is I'm um, sorry battlefield of the mind it's a devotional she also wrote a book called the Bat battlefield of the mind but this is Joyce Myers, and I highly encourage you to pick it up if you can. Um, there's a hundred different um, insights that will change the way you think, and it's it it's very powerful, very very powerful. So today it's Psalms 42:5. Why are you cast down, O my inner self? And why should you moan over me and be disquieted within me? Hope in God and wait expectantly for him, for I shall yet praise him, my help and my God. What's the use, Jeff said to me. I've tried many times to work for God and to accomplish great things. No matter what I do or how hard I work, I end up failing. Anybody else relate to that? But remember, we got to fail forward. I vowed that I would set aside time for God every day, Pam said. That was my only resolution for the year. She shrugged. It's now April, and I stuck with my plan for about three weeks. I never completed most of the important things in my life. Jeff and Pam are only two examples of people who feel hopeless. 
They know what they want to do, but they don't accomplish what they desire. There is no one way we can explain all failures, but both these believers had reached a place of hopelessness. They were sure they couldn't do it. I've tried before and I've failed, they said to each other. No, no, they, they didn't see a point in trying again. Okay, so I try again and then I fail again, Jeff said. I already feel bad. Why would I want to feel worse? I didn't realize that negative thoughts and words were the cause of our own failure. He didn't realize that the negative thoughts and words were the cause of his own failure. I'm sorry, my glasses are messing with my eyes. Satan was there to attack and discourage him, but he did most of the work himself through an attitude of hopelessness. I end up failing. Those were Pam's words. I never complete most of the important things in my life is the way she said it. By their own words, Jeff and Pam had prepared themselves to fail, and their words weren't the only thing that doomed them. It was the thoughts behind words. Discouragement destroys hope. Failure easily leads to more failure. And once we allow our minds to say, this is the way it will always be, the devil has won a victory over us. I urge Jeff and Pam to examine their thought life. For now, I urge, don't focus on the outcome or the result of your action. Go back to your attitude and your thought process. As we talked, it became obvious that Jeff expected to fail. The devil had already enslaved his mind. Of course he failed. He got just what he expected. The same was true of Pam. Both of them thought failure and focused on failure. They expected nothing else. They were afraid they would fail right from the beginning, and the Bible says that what we fear comes upon us, and that's so true. Ask yourselves, I said, what kind of thoughts have you been thinking? If we change our thoughts, we can change our outcome. Jeff and Pam both believed they would fail, but I wanted them to believe they could succeed. Jeff made great progress over the next few weeks. Whenever he, start, whenever he started on a new project, he would say, things are going a little slow, but I'm making progress. Yesterday was difficult and I started to feel discouraged. I even felt a little sorry for myself, but that was because I chose wrong thinking. The same was true for Pam. She said, I now refuse to be discouraged. Last Tuesday night, as I crawled into bed, I realized I had rushed so fast all day that I hadn't taken any time to spend with God, and I was too tired then. She asked God to forgive her, adding, help me not to give up. Pam realized that she had failed once last week and twice the week before. She reminded herself that she had been faithful the other days. That gave her hope. It's not a 100% victory, but it's a lot better than zero. Both Jeff and Pam finally realized the powerful truth, and we need to understand it too. Jesus does not condemn us. We condemn ourselves. And that's also through the help of the enemy. But if we start paying attention, as I've talked about all year, those voices in our head, those negative things that pop, you know, we have the ability to change that. We allow discouraging, disheartening thoughts to fill our minds. Now we need to be aware that we can push those thoughts aside and say, with your help, Lord Jesus, I can make it. And it's, it's so true, guys. It's so incredibly true. We have the power to do that. And it is, it is so easy to get discouraged and feel hopelessness seep, uh, seep in. But, hiya. but when we trust in God and listen to what's going on in our minds and redirect them as quickly as we can, we can pull ourselves out of those places. And, and you know as well as I do, there are those days that sometimes from start to finish, it's just difficult. And with us being not feeling well, that was some of the case. It was really hard. We were just down and out. But you got to progress and you got to want something better and you got to seek it. So it's okay to be discouraged. It's okay to feel hopeless. It's okay to have those feelings, but realize they're there and, and redirect them. You know, we have the ability to get ourselves from negative places to positive places. It just takes courage, practice, and faith. Good morning, Miss Joni. Ah, I'm so glad to have you joining me. So at the bottom of this, it does say, Lord Jesus, with your help, I can make it. With your help, I won't be discouraged and feel hopeless. 
With your help, I can defeat every wrong thought the devil slips into my mind. Thank you for victory. Amen. So again, I highly recommend this book. I have been greatly, greatly enjoying this book. And as you can see, I delve into a lot of things. I kind of let God guide me into what I'm doing and, and where I am directed. Um, and, you know, as far as being able to follow through, we've talked about this before. Um, but one of my goals was to journal and journal faithfully and, and have that become a habit. And I have successfully done that and I am finding, I'm finding great pleasure in that now too. I don't know if you can see that, but I have started making it a point to also envelope my creativity into my journal every day and to be able to do different things and, and that create that creativity is inspiring so much in me and I want to share this with you um, that's part why I wanted to talk about going back to school as well especially for homeschoolers because um, they are some great things but also for kids that are in school um, if you've got children that have or you have creativity that's untapped and you have art skills I love to draw I love, I can't always get the, um, the perspective right on all things, and I'd really like to perfect that. And um, there is a place called Skillshare. You can find it and get two months free um, through our link by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Skillshare. I will add that in the links below then. I did not do that. Um, but I started that two days ago. And there is a fabulous art class on there. And just in the first two classes, I already learned so much just from um, his tips. Uh, the guy's name is Brent Eviston. And I have such a desire to, to do pencil work and charcoal art, um, watercolor work. And I love to do black ink. And... I've been saving uh, shoulder bones from the animals out here. Elk shoulder bones are like massive. And I have deer ones as well. But And I think we have the moose ones too, as a matter of fact. But what I would like to do is do black ink seams on these, these um, sun-whitened bones. And I know that might sound weird to some. But I'd also like to be able to do... Um, and utilize that on other mediums. So I've started these courses, and you have two months free. Well, his basic courses is an eight-week program. So I think it's a great way to continue to learn new things, to inspire things, to inspire creativity. Just open it. <laughs> I know you were trying to be quiet. You don't have to. It's all good. <laughs> Get your lunch. <laughs> So I wanted to share that with you guys today. Take part in that. And keep in mind that it's not just art classes. There are thousands upon thousands of classes in there. And I didn't look to see if there are decluttering classes, but I have to imagine there are. Um, probably journaling classes, but there's thousands upon thousands of classes. If you're involved in blogging or writing or um, any of that stuff, there's I, I saw there's a lot of writing classes too. So you can fine tune video classes. Become If you have children that want to get into doing video, there's animation vi uh, classes I saw. There's also uh, photography classes. So there's all kinds of inspiring classes on here. And like I said, um, using our link, tryourwilderness.com slash Skillshare, S-K-I-L-L-S-H-A-R-E. You can sign up for two months free. Check it out because it's always good to inspire. Like if our children have are really good at drawing or photography or something at a young age, oh, tap into it. I mean, I, I just feel that the younger we learn these things, the more we can roll with these things and, and, and increase our knowledge and um, turn it into something. You know, I just see so many, especially in our small town where our seasons are... Um, our businesses and our industry is seasonal. It makes it hard for young kids to get
get a job and also to um, also maybe feed on um, their area of expertise. When you live in a small town, not everything is there. Uh, but they can create it there. They can create the business. They can tap into it. Um, learning these skills gives them something to fall back on. And it's not just our children. I want to see you guys expanding your knowledge and doing things you've always desired to do. Being able to create creativity and inspiration in ourselves and joy is really, really huge. And I love sitting and drawing. And the beautiful thing is I have got such an amazing environment. And this is the kind of stuff I love to draw. I am very outdoor based. I am a very outdoorsy girl. So the outdoor fascinates me and intrigues me. And that is exactly what I would love to tap into. So I encourage you guys and see what I'm doing is instead of being discouraged by my situation, I'm redirecting my thoughts. And that's exactly what I did Monday when I'm sitting on the couch feeling absolutely lousy and feeling like my head was going to pop. I chose to put my work aside that I wasn't being very productive with because my head was just throbbing to try to do something creative and following his lessons were very easy and um, some of the things he shared really opened my eyes to the ease of being able to do some of the things that I never considered and being able to doodle in my journal has been opening my eyes to not needing to be perfect. Tammy mentioned this a couple weeks ago or last week, you know, that she's a perfectionist. The mountain man's a perfectionist. I'm a perfectionist. And sometimes our efforts in being a perfectionist can keep us from pursuing things because we are expecting them to be perfect. I wasn't doodling in my journal because I was afraid they wouldn't be perfect or, and I didn't want to ruin my journal with imperfection. And then I thought about that. How silly and stupid is that? What a great way to show my growth in my doodling and in my work and, and being able to uh, create different things and create new inspirations. And also the freedom of not being perfect created the opportunity for me to do more. So we are holding ourselves back in a lot of ways. And, and discouragement is something that sets in very easily. I see it so much in, in my interactions with people and in their situations and their first reactions to things. And like I said, guys, our walk out here has changed us. And that's another um, uh, quote that I saw last week that, you know, as we walk through our journeys and our struggles and life, we come out the other side being different people. And that's a good thing if we allow it to nurture us and not go the opposite direction because it could go one of two ways. We could be very different in a positive light or we could have allowed us to be consumed by our, our situation and I don't want that for you guys. So that's why every week I am encouraging you guys to step it up, to do something. And I'm covering topics that I feel we all live through on a daily basis. And if not a daily basis, a very regular basis. You know, discouragement, hopelessness, um, negativity, those are things that creep in all the time. So I just want to encourage you guys to do things that inspire you, to do things that you've been always dying to do. You know, some things have a cost value to them and maybe you can't do them right now. But I know if you are like me, you have a zillion million things that you could do that don't cost anything if you just don't worry about the perfect timing of things. The other week I talked about how people have special things and they save them for special occasions and then they never use them anyway. It's kind of silly. You can't take them with you. So... Use them and do these things. And even if it's not perfect, perfect it. So those are my, my things for you that I want to share with you. And if you do have children going back to school, I know that can be a mixed emotional thing where, you know, on one hand, you know, your summer's over and you miss enjoying spending close-knit time with them. At the same time, it's nice to see them go to the next grade, go out and grow, and also maybe you get some of your free time back. So 
perfect example of perfect time to get involved in doing something new for yourself, which we will be talking more about. Let's see, today is the 13th, so next Wednesday I will have something to share with you in that regard as well. So guys, I really appreciate you taking the time to spend with me. Summertime is a busy time, it's a crunch time, so when you are here with me or you watch it at the replay, I know that you are giving up valuable you time, so thank you. Um, and I'm hoping that it's valuable for you. Um, also, as we end, I would love for you, both watching the live and the replay, that if there are topics you would like me to cover, if there's things you're going through, if there's homesteading or off-grid topics, preparedness, wilderness survival, natural health stuff that you would like me to cover, um, other types of uh, direction in our faith and biblically and um, some things that you might be going through that you need guidance on. You can either private message me or you can share them in the comments below, but your feedback feeds me and helps me to know what your needs are. So take some time and do that. And guys, I, like I said, thank you for joining me. I'm going to say our prayer here and send you on your way because I know you guys have a million things to do just like I do. So Papa, Jesus, I just thank you so much for what you do in these live videos and how you bring us together, how you feed me, provide me with the topics and the discussions and just um, for allowing others to come into this and be transparent, be vulnerable, be courageous. It's so awesome to have people sharing their struggles, their their celebrations, and, and that we can all learn, pray for each other, help each other, and just grow. Grow not, in our, not only in ourselves and in our families, but in you as well. And I just thank you for what you're going to do in everyone's lives this week. I know you are working in a million ways in each of our lives, doing amazing and grand things. And I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around everyone watching now and the replay. And just let them feel your presence. Let them see your hand in things. Let them hear your voice, whether it's through their quiet time that they they hear your message spoken in their heads or ideas are popped or things are things are shown to them someone shares something with them that was greatly needed that they're led in the right direction that they know that you are present and that you love them more than anyone on this planet just give them that feeling of comfort give them that feeling of love help them through their 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 journeys right now be with them and guide them I ask that you be with Terry and June and just continue to work in their lives and in their marriage and just strengthen Terry and his walk. Um, he's already a warrior. And I ask that you uh, be with Chad and continue to help him and, and uh, uh, just comfort him. Be with Pat Kenny and Mark as they are uh, walking through cancer as well as Cheryl and Deborah Kidd as well. and. Uh, I just ask that you be with everyone on our prayer list, be with Kim Johnson, continue to allow her light to shine and be with her children, be with the Martes and just help them as they uh, process this loss of joy. And uh, Lord, just thank you for what you're going to do for each of us, uh, whether we have to walk it out for 40 years, whether we have to walk it out for a decade, whether we have to walk it out for five years, three years, or a month. Whatever our struggles are that we are going through, I know that you have purpose in them. There's always purpose in everything that we go through. So just give everybody the courage to walk it out and to be strong in their faith. And when they hear these negative voices of hopelessness and discouragement and negativity, that they instantly realize where it's coming from and redirect themselves and refocus their lives and their days and, and regroup. Every day we have the opportunity for new beginnings, whether it's multiple times a day or each day, whatever we need, we all have different needs. But just remember that is there and I just thank you for what you're gonna do for all of us. And we ask this in your holy and precious name of Jesus, amen. Okay, thank you, Terry. I appreciate that, for sharing that, that you are looking for natural health information. 
And I want to I want to say one thing. Last week on my YouTube video, I'm going to um, answer his question, but someone on our YouTube channel asked how I knew I was low on iron because I mentioned that last week. And I mentioned I did a little research. Man, I got to take these off. They're messing with my eyes today for some reason. Um, I am very in tune with my body. I have been involved in natural health since I'm 14. I have healed the last three years completely naturally with natural medicines and natural healing methods. And I continue to grow in that arena. And as a result of being very in tune with my body, I was having certain issues. And as I researched those issues, the big thing that came up was lack of iron, low iron. And it also mentioned that as a result of low iron, that your thyroid would be causing you issues, which were some of the other struggles that I was having were relating to. And I don't take a day-to-day -day supplement uh, vitamin, um, although I have them because of my healing regimen, I have been staying strict on certain things so I can analyze my situation. Now, I did not go and get blood work. Um, I could have, we don't have the funding for it. Um, I will be sharing something with you next week that will help you guys um, to really get and hone in on your personal health and that of your families. Um, without blood work, uh, it's actually more intensive work, um, but probably less expensive. And I will be sharing that with you next week. Um, I'm getting more of the details and that is something that we are going to be doing. Mountain Boy has done it previously. Um, but when you're in tune with your body, it's, it is definitely, I will say this right off the bat, it is not good to self-medicate and self-diagnose if you're, if you're not well-versed in it. Um, it is important to be careful because natural supplements, um, natural herbs, and um, over-the-counter medications can be really harmful if not used properly. So I do want to mention that, and I, I'm always very careful to mention that because um, you can do yourself harm, but the more you learn in these arenas and the more you learn and become in tune with your body, the more you are able to do such things. And that is why I mentioned what I did. And that is why I stay on natural health and I encourage you to delve deeper into natural health because if anything were ever to happen that our medical system was no longer available to us, we need something to fall back on. And our ancestors and the Indians survived and, and cured a lot of things. And we have access to that information. We need to learn it. And again, it's important to not just uh, you know, go out and grab an herb out of your yard and choose to use it without the knowledge of knowing how it can affect you. Because even though an herb could be good for you, um, consume too much could be lethal. So it is important, but you gotta learn and you gotta know good resources and that's what I'm gonna teach you. So I did wanna touch on that because he did ask how I knew that. I did not go um, to get a blood work, but I am very in tune with my body and I am very aware of changes in my body. I was losing hair. My nails were getting very brittle. Um, my nails are bad to begin with because of all the toxins that were in my body. Um, so the hair loss could have been a lack of biotin, but I use biotin shampoo all the time. And I also take a biotin supplement. So I knew that the continuous hair loss was something different. Um, this time. So you learn as you go. It's no different than anything else. It's no different than learning to draw. You learn, you gain knowledge, and you use that knowledge moving forward. And you continue to build an arsenal. And, and that is what I want to encourage you guys to do. It's so important in all aspects of our lives. Because in writing an article for The New Pioneer, one of the things I said recently is that our goal here was to be able to continue a day-to-day -day lifestyle process and um, keep everything going, do everything we do here 
even if everything fell apart, even if we lost solar, to be able to do everything we do here without the need for power and the outside world. Now, I also said that it's important to realize that being um, self-sustainable and self-reliant is a good thing, but you can't do that without God first, because without God, you'll never be fully self-reliant and self-sustainable, because he would be the missing piece. So with that being said, you guys have a fantastic day. Let me know topics you'd like to hear. Thank you for joining me, for your transparency, for your comments, and just for your love. You guys have no idea how much you help us carry through and feel that what we are doing is definitely a God-given thing and that we are doing it for Him. We give Him all the glory, all the glory, but we thank you for fueling our fire in our weakness. So, thank you. Guys, have a fantastic day. I love you all. God bless.